Hey everybody, uh, the purpose of this video is to get you some solutions to the bike combination lock quiz uh, from this week. So um, the big idea here, and I'm not going to read the entire thing to you because you already read it, but uh, the, co the comparison between shuffling out a deck of cards like we did on the first day of class and the order of the digits in a combination lock. The first question asks, what was the difference between those two things? Because there's, there's definitely a similarity. For example, if you're dealing a deck of cards out and the cards come in this order, ace of spades, two of hearts, three of clubs, and then another shuffle goes three of clubs, ace of spades, two of hearts, those are different deals. I mean, imagine playing poker or blackjack and getting the different cards. Just because it's the same three cards, the order matters because this card goes with that person, this card goes with that person. Combination lock's the same thing. If you've got one of those little wheelie type locks like HB has, you're going to have a number, say your combination is one, two, three, four, like the dude, this baseball's uh, president, President Scroob. Uh, one, two, three, four is a different combination than four, three, two, one, or two, three, four, one, or any other arrangement of those numbers. So they're similar in that respect. They're different, though, in that when you shuffle out a deck of cards, this is question number one on the quiz, once you throw a card down, you can't use that card again anywhere in the shuffle. So if the ace of spades comes out first, You've got 51 more spaces to fill, but you know for a fact none of them will be the ace of spades. FYI, this is why card counting works. And this is why people can go to Vegas and count cards, because they can keep track of what's come out, and then they know it's no longer in the deck. So that works pretty well. But with a bike combination lock, there can be repetitions. For example, the lock I'm looking at right here, uh, and the one we're going to talk about in the quiz, the digits go from 0 through 9, so there's 10 possibilities for each one. The combination could be zero, 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 zero. Nobody says you couldn't reuse digits in that case. So the answer to number one is we could not reuse the exact same card twice or more than twice, but we definitely could or can have the same number be in more than one spot. So that's, that's the first one there. And um, then I start showing you um, some counting based on similar to what we did on the first day of class, which was the 52 times 51 times blah, 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 all the way down to one. The difference here is you don't decrease the number of possibilities with each one because you can reuse the, uh, the digits more than one time. So I asked you in number two, continuing this pattern, hopefully the pattern you realized was every time you add a dial to the, uh, to the lock, you, you multiply the number of, of combinations you have uh, by 10. So, so if you have four dials, you end up with 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, or 10,000 possible combinations or arrangements of those numbers. And, you know, you can see right away that that's going to be an absolute pain in the gourd to, uh, to brute force. Everything from 0000 to 9999. And not to mention the fact, well, I'll come back to that in a second. Then I asked, assuming it takes you about five, five seconds to check each combination, so if you start with zero, 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 and then you pull, it doesn't work, then you change the last zero to a one, you pull it, it doesn't work. You change it to a two, it doesn't work. Um, so I said it takes about five seconds to check the combination. I meant on average, because, you know, you're going to put zero, 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 zero in, and then you're going to pull it and check it. And then if that doesn't work, you're going to flip it and try zero, 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 one. That's not going to take you five seconds, but I guarantee at some point you're going to screw something, <laughs> screw something up and have to go back and figure out where you screwed it up. And if you average all that time out, it'll be about five seconds per. But even if you get it perfectly, and it is literally five seconds per, that means you're going to have 50,000 seconds. Seconds. Now, if you want to change, I asked, I asked you how long it would take. Um, 50,000 seconds is kind of hard to process, you know, what, how long that is. I mean, one, two, three, how long is it going to take you to count to 50,000? So you can do a little bit of math if you want to by taking that number and multiplying it by uh, uh, 60 seconds in a minute and then multiplying that by 60 minutes in one hour, and this will convert it to hours for you. So basically, if you take 50,000 and divide it by 3,600, which I cannot do, it's going to be a little bit more than 10, I guess, because that's a little bit less than, so we got, wait, 50,000 divided by 3,600, uh, yeah, 13.8, so it's about 14 hours. 
Now, of course, if you were to work straight through 14 straight hours or 14 hours of cumulative time, interestingly enough, I, I will tell you this, I had a colleague years ago, some of you may have had him in class too, uh, who this exact same thing happened to him. And he sat in every department meeting the entire year with his little lock. And he just kept trying combinations until he found it. And I forget, it didn't take him 14 straight hours because it, his combination wasn't 9999. But he figured it out somewhere during the year. And uh, I, I never forget him just sitting there, not paying attention to the meeting, just tw twiddling his lock. Anyway. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's how long it would take. Now, the, the interesting thing is if you can narrow it down, if you can make one of these numbers smaller, if you can make one of those numbers smaller, then the number 10,000 gets smaller, which means the number 50,000 gets smaller. But what's the only way to make one of those numbers smaller? Well, the reason each of those numbers is 10 is because we have no idea what's going on in each digit. This was like, I have no idea in the digits. This next little working thing that I did here, I walked you through, what if HB knows there's a nine somewhere? Maybe even more than one, but we know there's at least one nine. Well then, one of those tens becomes a one. Because, not because the number one, but because there's only one possibility for the number in that spot. We know it's only going to be one possibility. That number has to be a nine. Now, there are four places the nine could be, and that's what you walk through there in the, uh, that's what you walk through in the, in the analysis there on the quiz. But knowing that there's a nine, knowing that there's a nine removes how many? I think it was 6,000. Yeah, there's only 4,000 combinations. You've gotten rid of more than half of the combinations that are available by simply knowing there's at least one nine in it. That's incredible. Think about that. We'll come back to that in a second. But then I started talking to her some more. I mean, it's still 4,000. If you work the numbers on 4,000, it's going to take roughly a little bit more than half of that. So maybe six hours. It's still a long time. But then she said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know it starts with an eight and it has a nine somewhere. So we're back to, we know it has a nine somewhere, but we also have a little bit more information. We also know the first number has to be an eight. And then there's a nine somewhere in the remaining three. So there's a couple ways you can look at this. I looked at it with all four digits. So in number four, I gave you three choices, A, B, and C. I'd like to walk through it with you rather than just give you the answer. Here's the four dials on the lock. Now, my buddy HB says, I know it starts with an eight. I know it starts with an eight. Well, that means the number in the beginning does not have but one possibility. It has to be eight, which means there's a one right there. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add something to this. This must be the number eight. Therefore, it's got one choice. Now, you'll notice on the quiz, I actually have three blanks. I'm going to build this whole thing at once. These, this is because if you know the eight has to be first, that means the nine that she also knows is there has to be either in the second spot or the third spot or the fourth spot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the one in the first spot of each one of these because we know the eight has to be in the front. But now we also know there has to be a nine a nine, at least one, maybe more, but at least one nine. So if we know the guaranteed nine has to be there, that's the second spot, but it could also be in the third spot and it could also be in the fourth spot. It could also be in the fourth spot, okay? So that's gonna be where the nine is. I'm gonna get a different color here. Put a nine, okay? So, so we'll do, I should do this in color. Eight, nine. Nine, eight. Now some of you are still on there. I'm like, he's like, you're probably saying to yourself, he's writing one but saying eight. The one does not stand for the number one. It stands for the number of possible digits that could be in there. Now, watch this. We know that there has to be an eight here. If the known nine is here, and we have no idea about the other two numbers, that means there's still 10 possibilities for each one of the remaining spots. And that goes for all of them. There's 10 possibilities for each of the other spots. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. So you got 10 for the second, 10 for the third. Now it's 10 because it could be an eight. All HB said was it starts with an eight. She didn't say anything about there. She didn't, she didn't say there couldn't be eights anywhere else yet. We'll get to that in a second. So right now, 
we've got 100 there, right? 1 times 1 times 10 times 10 is 100. There's 100, there's 100, a total of 300 combinations to check. A lot, but it's dropping exponentially. Hopefully you see that. It's dropped with a little bit more information. It's dropping exponentially. Okay, I didn't ask you to actually tell me how much time that would take, but knowing that's for 50,000, you could figure out pretty easily how little time it would take to do 300. Okay, so, so far, I think we're on the right track. Now, I want to clear a little bit of space. Huh? No, I'm not. I'll just squeeze it in up there. Yeah, I am going to put some space. We'll go over here. All right, and we'll drop this down to 10,000. Okay. Now, Last but not least, I'm talking to her again. And she goes, wait, dude, dude, I'm wrong. Okay, what do you mean you're wrong? And she's like, it's all eight and nines, eights and nines. Really? It's all eights and nines? And she's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I know the combination has eights and nines in it. Okay, so at this point, if I know, but then I ask her, does it still start with the eight? Because that would make life really easy, right? You have one choice for the front and then just two choices for the last three. And then she goes, ooh, I don't know. It might start with a nine. But I know there are only eights and only nines in it. I said, okay, this is fantastic. Now for this one, I asked you to just list all the possibilities out. And the reason I asked you to list them out is actually it's harder to do this. I, th I think personally it's harder to do this than it is to just list them all out. And here's why I, I think that. If you know it has to have eights and nines in it, it can't be all eights or all nines. So 8888 is off the table and 9999 is off the table. Okay? If it were all eights and nines and maybe there weren't both of them in there, this would be a simple matter of going 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 or 16. Two choices for the first one, either 8 or 9. Two choices for the second, 8 or 9. Two choices for the third, 8 or 9. Two choices for the last, 8 or 9. That's it. But knowing that you have to have at least one of each in both, I think it's actually easier just to list them out. So what a lot of students, and I saw some of your classmates doing this, what a lot of students do, this is number five, is they, they simply write down one potential uh, order and then reverse, reverse the eights and the nines to get the other one. So I saw one student go uh, eight, nine, 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 and then she turned right around and said, okay, the other one is 9888. Eight, eight. So now you know that's a possibility because it has both digits in it and, uh, and, uh, and it's flip-flopped, it's mirrored. Then what she did, I thought was very clever, was she passed the 8 through. So in other words, then she went 8, excuse me, 9899, 8988, which I thought was very clever because now you're exhausting all possibilities for the combinations that only have one uh, eight and the rest nines in it. So then we have nine, nine, eight, nine, or eight, eight, nine, eight. I think this is very clever. And then nine, 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 eight, or eight, 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 nine. So we've gotten eight of our possible combinations out of the way already. Okay, so that's, that's one. That's one of the series of combinations we can have with all the eights and all the nines. Now, let's try, then she's, she moved, because this is three and one or one and three. The other possibility is two and two. Okay, so then she sat down and said, okay, let's go eight, eight, nine, 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 eight, eight. So that's one way to do it. And then, I again, very clever, keep this eight pegged, but move this one over. So then you have eight, nine, eight, nine, Nine, eight, nine, eight. Very clever, I think. Then move the eight again. So you have eight, nine, nine, eight, nine, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I'm looking here, I should be looking here. Uh, nine, eight, eight, nine. Okay. Now, at this point, you have to pay attention because these are all unique. These are all unique. You've got 14 different unique orders now. Doing it her way is fantastic, I, I believe, because you're, you're, double, you're, you're kind of doing double duty. The problem is, if you're careless, you might then say, okay, let's switch this 8 and this 9 and go 9898. Eight, nine, eight. But the problem is, you've already done that one here. So at this point, you have to know that you've already got them all. 
<laughs> or at least double check your work to make sure. This is all. This is all of them. There are four ways to have three nines and an eight. There are four ways to have three eights and a nine. And there are six ways to have two of each. That's it. We know we can't have all eights or all nines. So remember before I said if we didn't know that you had to have both, there were 16 total possibilities. Two times two times two times two to get 16. That would be all of these plus the other two that we know we can't have. So there are your possibilities for there are your possibilities for that last. I think the last question actually I ask you um, that's number four. I guess I got the number I got the numbers off. Four points. Oh yeah. And then number six was simply, do you think you could actually list all those out and test them? Yeah, I'm thinking if you knew that, that was it, you could have those tested in a matter of a minute probably. Because chances are you wouldn't need to test all of them. Uh, you'd probably have to test roughly half of them. And five seconds a pop, you're still looking at half a minute or a little bit more. So I hope that helped. Um, it's really nice to realize that Simple multiplication can can do things like crack passwords. Now, of course, it can also work to our disadvantage. This is why Equifax got hacked. But also, in a neat application, if you've ever seen the um, the movie, uh, the Imitation Game, it's about Alan Turing and how the, some U.S. scientists, mathematicians, cracked the Nazi code in World War II. It's pretty fantastic. The same exact thing as the spike lock. They were brute force testing brute force testing all possibilities. Now this was using letters, so many, many exponentially, super, super exponentially more possibilities using letters. They, the Nazis changed their code every day. The computer they were using in the 1940s could not check the numbers fast enough before the end of the day and then it got reset. And they were getting more and more frustrated and more and more frustrated. And without giving too much away, something similar to my buddy Amy going, I know that there's an 8 and a 9 in it, happened. And they were able to crack the code the next day. So anyway, it's a very interesting movie if you get a chance. Uh, it's sad too, but very interesting. So anyway, I hope this helped, and uh, we'll see you in class.